Why we pray? We pray because God is our loving Father. We pray because we are the temple of the Lord. We start our day with a prayer so God may guide us all the day. We pray when we are anxious. We pray when we are happy. We pray in all occasions and circumstances. We pray alone in silence. We pray as a community for one another. We bear one another's burdens. We do not boast of ourselves. We pray in the example of Jesus. We pray in the spirit of the truth. We pray our praise to God. We pray to be renewed. We bear our hearts to God. We pray for peace. We pray because God asked us to pray. We pray because God listens. Amen. <laughs> when, I was, when I was putting that together, mm -hmm. I was looking for scriptures on prayer because my mom and my aunt both told me, I don't think I've ever heard a, a, a sermon on prayer. Your mom was talking about that the other day. <laughs> and I thought that was odd because there are so many scriptures about prayer. And I, when you consider the entire book of Psalms is a book of prayers, that's why... The format of the Psalms is what it is. It starts out in praise to God and thanks to God. And then it goes in to its petition to God. And then it usually ends with an assurance. Because when we pray, as Paul tells us, we should be assured. In fact, I should have... Um, I should have arranged this pamphlet in order, in order of how I wanted to preach out of it, but I didn't think that far ahead. In 1 John, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of Him. So when the Psalms finish with this assurance, that's what they're talking about. And there's not a lot of examples in the Bible about how to pray. There's not a lot of why we pray because, well, for the same reason as there's not on fasting. It was cultural. The authors of Scripture assumed that we would pray. This wasn't uniquely unique to Judaism. It's not unique to Christianity. In every religion... People pray, you know, and they did that. You know, they do that today, and they did that ten thousand years ago. People have always prayed, and even if you're not religious, do you wish for luck? Do you maybe uh, turn things over to the flip of a coin? That, in and of itself, is a form of prayer. Even when we have our democratic process, when we vote, in a way it's a form of prayer. Because we're offering our opinions, we're offering, we're, we're asking something of something greater than ourselves. Democracy is something greater than ourselves. And even in Jesus' day, people could turn that into an idol. And I don't think that's really our problem today, that we've turned democracy into an idol. Don't think I'm saying that. Because I think we need to go a lot farther with democracy than we have gone. But getting back to prayer, there are a lot of examples. And we can learn a lot. When we look at the pattern of the Psalms, we see that same pattern in the Lord's Prayer, and there are two versions of it in Scripture. There are a lot more versions than that because medieval tradition, and monks often added what they wanted to add, but there are basically two versions of it. And the one, the long version is the one that you're most likely familiar with. And you'll read that here in the middle, under What Do We Pray? This is from Matthew chapter 6. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That's that first part. We praise our God. Here's the second part. Give us today our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are the things we ask of of God. And here's the assurance, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And this is a beautiful prayer, but it is most likely not the one that Jesus actually prayed because there is a shorter version of this prayer found in Luke, and that's in chapter 11. And it says simply, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into into temptation. You notice everything essential is there. It's essentially the same prayer. But it doesn't quite roll off the tongue like the long version does. There's not a right or wrong version. It's probably true that Jesus prayed both of these prayers with different groups of people. Jesus tells us to pray, to pray alone, to pray in ways that are not ostentatious. And we see in his Sermon on the Mount, he he tells people to uh, proclaim the gospel, but also to live it quietly in Matthew chapter 5, to proclaim it as a city on a hill in Matthew chapter 6, to be quiet and not let your good deeds be seen in public. And I think looking through these examples on prayer, we really see why. Because we're supposed to do both. When we pray alone, he says in Matthew chapter 6, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Now Jesus chose his words very carefully. He says, do not be like the pagans. Their gods are far away on Mount Olympus. Their gods have to be shouted to. Their gods don't love them. Your God is your Father, and your Father loves you. Jesus chose his words very carefully in characterizing God, but he also says we have to pray together. Now, doesn't that mean praying publicly? He says in James chapter 5, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, I have obvious leanings towards the prophetic. And I don't want you to think that I'm advocating faith healing here. But so much of what sickens us. So much of the reason that we don't go out is because of anxiety, is because of social pressure, is because of the things that honestly the elders laying on hands and saying, child, you are loved. You are supported. What do you need? How can we help? That cures so many illnesses that are not the flu that are not COVID, that are not cancer. That's not what Jesus is talking about. He is talking about supporting one another and taking up one another's burdens. And that is absolutely the kind of sickness that can be healed through prayer. So he says, when you want to pray to God, when you want something, pray quietly to God. That's the kind of prayer you take privately. But when you want to pray in support of one another, do it publicly so that that person knows they have a community 
that supports them. So Jesus expects that we will pray both of these kinds of prayers and for different reasons. And there are so many reasons why we should be praying to God. Almost every book of the Bible talks about this. I made sure that our songs, our first songs, came right out of the Psalms because I didn't want to have to go through them all. There are so many wonderful prayers. (laughs) And honestly, the biggest reasons I saved for the end, because God is our loving Father, that is why we pray. Because our God is not on Mount Olympus. He is right here among us. He is as close as our very breath. So every word we say aloud is from God and to God. Because just as God blew into Adam's nostrils that Ruach Kadosh, the Holy Spirit, the breath of life, that is how close God is to us. So in Matthew 7, he says, For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? When we pray to God, there are no magic words. We don't have to pray this version of the Lord's Prayer or that version of the Lord's Prayer. There's two of them found in the Bible. And various words besides found in medieval tradition. But they're not magic words. Our Father already knows what we need. He already hears us. And... As as Paul says in Romans chapter 8, he says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. We are filled with God's Spirit, and Jesus is our high priest. He represents us to God. So not only is our best already being seen by God, not only are our sacrifices of praise being given by the best possible high priest, but God's Spirit looks for the very meaning that lives within us. So that even when we can't find the words, it doesn't matter because our meaning is already known by God. I have a tendency to lean towards the prophetic, and that's because I believe in a God who listens. I believe in a God who values each and every one of us because he made us in his own image. And his will for our life is that we will be more and more ourselves each and every day. And that when we raise that up to God, we are doing God's will. Because how can it not be? We're made in His image. I believe in a God that loves us, that could never be up high on Mount Olympus because He would be too far away. A God that loved us so much that he came to live among us. Who saw that when we were headed the wrong way, he stood in front of that danger. He put himself between us and it and gave his life because we didn't know any better. And I pray every day that we will always learn from Jesus, that we will always be willing to give of ourselves and to become more like Jesus, as the song says, all 
of thee and none of self. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. And praise the Lord. And praise the Lord.